What's going on guys? Welcome back to Mopar Garage. Um, I did rebrand the channel a little bit. The name before was just my name. Um, rebranded it to Mopar Garage because, well, that's all we're ever gonna work on in this garage, most likely, is Mopar. So, makes sense. Sitting behind me is not the Shelby Project because still nothing on the title. I'm starting to lose hope that it's gonna happen. I have this much hope left. Um, but we do have a couple little housekeeping things to work on on my uh, 99 second gen. So for those of you who are new to the channel, um, this truck is a lot nicer than it looks. Um, it does need body work, it does need wheels and tires, but mechanically, 100% sound. Every seal and gasket on the motor has been done. Every steering component, suspension component, drive shafts. I mean, this thing is 100% mechanically restored. Um, it actually is a really nice truck. So interior is even all restored. Um, it is a five speed with a 318 in it. So my favorite combination of truck. A um, couple little things. The oil is currently draining out of the truck and uh, it's gonna left rear tail light out. So we're gonna change that bulb real quick. And it's got this little issue that it's been doing when you've been driving it and you push the clutch in and you come to a stop the uh, idle is surging. So no check engine light. I know all the sensors in it are good. So thinking maybe a vacuum leak somewhere. So we might look into that real quick too. Um, but uh, yeah, I think I've got a tail light bulb. I've got a stock of parts for these second gen Dodgers because for whatever reason, I love them. So uh, yeah, let's tackle the tailgate while that oil drains. All right, while I'm pulling this tail light out, um, do you have a question for you guys? I don't know. These Shelby projects that I'm looking for it. So I was going to try to keep it a secret, but it may not happen. So Shelby Charger is so 1985 to 1986. Shelby Charger, they made them for two years with Turbo. Uh, they did make an 87, but that was a whole different story. That was a Shelby specific car. Um, so 85 or 86. Um, Shelby Charger was the plan because in 85 and 86 they were turbocharged. Um, they're super hard to find, and I found one. And the uh, title issue seems to have held that up. I'm starting to lose hope. So I don't know if I get another one of these second gens, make that a project, um, or if I try to wait and try to find another Shelby Charger. The chances of me finding another one are pretty slim and I want a new project pretty soon. So um, you guys let me know if I should wait to get a Shelby or if I should just start on another second gen, try to save another one. This truck was headed to the junkyard when I got it. So I get a lot of satisfaction out of, uh, out of saving these trucks that are headed to the junkyard. Here is the culprit. Let's see if I got one. T3157, let's see. It would appear that I do. This thing's blown a couple bulbs on the left side of the truck here. One tail light and one front directional. So might be something a little fishy electrically with this thing. I wouldn't be surprised. But if there is, we'll chase it down. We'll find it. These bolts are so crusty. I'm going to put a little lube on them. Premium never sees lubricant. Let's go. All right. Success. It was the... The constant was working, but not the brake light or directional. All right, let's head over to the second gen parts area. Um, grab us an 090, some super tech. One of my, I think it's my second most popular video ever, is about how super tech is the best oil on the market. Love to get this little issue figured out with the vacuum because this thing's actually my daily driver a lot of the time. If 
five quarts came out of this thing does not burn a drop of oil. Anyone who says your 318 or your 360 burns oil, well, most of them do, but it's not valve seals, it's not rings. It's the intake plenum gasket. So every single second gen V8 I buy, I replace the intake plenum gasket because otherwise you're gonna burn oil. All right, this thing runs so good. Here how quiet that motor is. But when you rev it up, you guys can hear it but it's missing right now kind of idling up and down well, I noticed that the problem is a lot worse when you hit the brakes so I pulled the vacuum line off the brake booster it goes from the brake booster over to the plenum or to the intake manifold and lo and behold I can't see through it and there is what appears to be a mud wasp nest in there so hopefully I just found the culprit in two or three minutes. Yeah, brake booster wasn't the culprit. Still got the symptom. So pulled my main vacuum line here that connects right there to the intake manifold. And lo and behold, another mud wasp nest. This thing is completely clogged. So it might've been a combination of the two. I'm gonna clean this one and see where that all right, she's all clean. This guy controls full-wheel drive actuation, all kind, basically everything that's vacuum operated, it, it goes to, so. Let's hook this baby back up and see. Oh, we might have fixed it. surging a little bit. We might have to take it for a quick test drive. Let's see. Let's see here. No. No, that time it totally died. Got a bump starter. Well, that wasn't it. Let's see if we can find more. There's no engine light. Never has been. So it's gotta be something vacuum related, I'd imagine. So I pulled, I'm out here at the front of the truck. I got my diagram. Pulled this guy apart. That was what was clogged right here. Okay, I just took the truck for a drive. And this goes out to client, um, cruise control. Then over here, um, one of these is for your four-wheel drive actuation. The other one's for your climate. So that shouldn't have anything to do with the truck running. That should have, and the heat all works, four-wheel drive works. You got your PCV valve right here. And that, hmm. That could be if the PCV valve is bad. That could very well be the culprit. Let's, I'm gonna shut the camera off and check if there's any clogs in this line. Is that, if that breathe, so PCV is like a crankcase breather. And if that is plugged up or inoperational, that could cause a bad idle. So let me pull this apart. So the PCV valve is not obstructed. The valve itself, pretty loose in there. Um, I guess the test would be, if we run the truck, put my finger over the valve, see if there's a, you should feel all kinds of vacuum. Uh, let's try that. Okay. Oh yeah, that's working. All of our vacuum checks out. 
The only thing I haven't tested is their EVAP purge solenoid. So if I'm not mistaken, if we pull the line that goes back to the cylinder itself, which is this guy, and then unplug it electronically, I shouldn't feel any vacuum on this, if I'm not mistaken. If I feel vacuum, the purge solenoid's bad. And then that could cause the truck to run super rich and and then it would it would it would idle like crap. So that could very well be the culprit. Let's perform a test on this. Look at this, a little service port. So I don't have to unplug this guy. Just unscrew the service port. We can perform our test right there. I got it unplugged. Um, let's fire the truck up and check that. All right, now I'm gonna double check this on the old Googles, but I believe I shouldn't feel any vacuum right now from this. So, wet my finger a little bit. I believe I'm feeling vacuum. Yeah. So that means that's gotta be bad. I'm gonna double check myself, but I, I think you shouldn't feel any vacuum at idle with that unplugged. All right, we got us a new valve. $64 later. Hopefully that's the culprit. If not, well, you can't return an electrical component. So it's gonna get added to the part stock. So let's go ahead and change this baby out and see what we come up with. All right, after a grueling 35 second changeover, my concern is this valve doesn't seem old at all. It's almost like somebody tried this repair already, but we'll just have to take it for a test drive and see because like I said, this thing's been my daily lately. My uh, 2500's hooked up all the time to my trailer. So having it stall out at stoplights is kind of annoying. So hopefully this fixes it. I'm not holding my breath though, because this, this is not old at all. So we will just have to see. Well guys, we're back from the test drive. As we feared, the uh, Someone had tried the purge valve already. So this one's not very old. This is the used one. Um, once I pulled that electrical connection, it didn't look very old, um, but someone had, uh, someone had had the same thought process that we had. Um, at this point, I'm kind of out of ideas. I have checked everything on this truck having to do with vacuum. I really don't think it's a sensor because I've never had a check engine light, but Maybe we'll start testing sensors on the next one. But for now, I'm going to enjoy this beautiful South Carolina winter day. Um, I think we're done in the garage for now. Um, I'll keep you guys updated on the Shelby project. If that one comes together that I already found, that's going to be great. If we have to find another one, mm, it's tough to do. Um, but we'll come up with some kind of project, maybe another second gen. I love saving them from the junkyard. If you can spend a thousand bucks, 1500 bucks, Keep them from going to the junkyard, bring them in, um, spend a couple grand to get them back on the road. Um, that's, to me, really satisfying. As you guys know, it's kind of my hobby. Um, if you guys have any other ideas on that rough idle on the truck, um, seems to get worse when the weather's hot outside. Um, but yeah, push the clutch in, go to stop the truck. It kind of almost stalls, it sometimes does stall and surges. Um, any ideas, drop them in the comments below. Um, we'll keep you updated and we'll see you on the next one.